Welcome to Questioning Evolution, Introducing Creation, which is an abbreviated version of my larger seminar called uh, Creation versus Evolution. In each of these segments, what I hope to do is give you maybe one big idea for you to think about, chew on, and consider until the next time we meet. Because whether you're a Christian or not, at some point in your life, you should question and study the assumed teaching of evolution. I mean, who's putting up the stop sign for you in your life saying, hey, this thing may not be true. Who is openly questioning evolution in our culture? Who's casting doubt on this theory, the same theory that's been declared settled science now for 160 years? Did you know that evolution is not a modern scientific theory at all? Instead, it is only the ancient rebellion of men against their creator. It's been updated a bit, I'll give you that. It's, it's more sophisticated in its pseudo-scientific garb now, but underneath is the same old pagan warfare that unbelievers have waged against God in every age. Did you know that almost none of the leaders of the quote-unquote evolutionary revival of the 19th century, the guys who first popularized and articulated the theory of evolution, none of them were trained as legitimate scientists in the modern sense. Did you know that? Has anyone ever told you that? In other words, none of these leading voices in the evolutionary revival were physicists, none of them were chemists, None of them were biologists, none of them were geologists, none of them were astronomers, none of them had studied any of the natural sciences. Let me give you some names. The biggest name of all of them is Charles Darwin, and he wrote the book, The Origin of the Species. But Charles Darwin was not a scientist. He was an apostate theology student. He had no science degree. Another guy, Charles Lyell, he was an attorney. William Smith was a surveyor. James Hutton was an agriculturalist. John Playfair was a mathematician. Robert Chambers was a journalist. Alfred Russell Wallace had no formal education. Thomas Huxley was an indifferent medical student. Herbert Spencer was a railroad engineer apprentice. Thomas Malthus was an economist and a part-time theologian. And Erasmus Darwin was a doctor when he wasn't writing poetry. Of all the chief contributors to the revival of evolutionism, commonly associated with what we call Darwinism, only Jean Lamarck of France and Ernst Haeckel of Germany seem to have had a bona fide education in the branch of evolutionary science that they pursued. And both of them had their own particular anti-Christian agendas that they promoted. Now, there were others involved in this odd scenario, of course, but these that I just mentioned were the chief actors. They were the key players. And among them was hardly one genuine scientist in the modern sense of having approved credentials. Now, ask yourself, why would you want to learn science from people who weren't scientists? That's all for now. See you next time.